Hey, what's up you guys? It's Ilarian Garbazo with you and today we'll have a talk on the image segmentation. Let's talk about it! Guys, I need your help. So push the like button, crash the like button, subscribe. What is image segmentation? So far you have seen image classification where the task of the network is to assign a label or class to an input image. However, suppose you want to know where an object is located in the image, the shape of that object, uh, which pixel belongs to which object. In this case you will want to segment uh, the image, each pixel of the image is given a label. Thus the task of image segmentation is to train a, a neural network to output a pixel-wise mask of the image. This helps in understanding the image at a much lower level. Uh, the pixel level. Image segmentation has many applications in medical imaging, self-driving cars and satellite imaging to uh, name a few. Uh, the da dataset that will be used for this tutorial is the Oxford PET dataset created by uh, Parkey et al. The dataset consists of images, the corresponding labels and pixel-wise masks. The masks are basically labels for each pixel. Each pixel is given one of three categories. Class 1 pixel belonging to the pad, class 2 pixel bordering the pad, and class 3 none of the above surrounding pixel. As usual, first of all, we need to import libraries. Uh, we would Im import uh, TensorFlow. Uh, we would import TensorFlow datasets and other TensorFlow libraries. So, uh, we need the dataset. The dataset is already included in TensorFlow datasets. All that is needed to do is download it. And uh, we have the dataset, uh, as I told you, Oxford dataset. It uh, got the segmentation masks uh, are included. So we are uh, using TFDS load uh, Oxford PET uh, dataset. Uh, the following code performs a simple augmentation of flip, uh, flipping an image from uh, left to right. In addition, the image is normalized uh, to uh, from uh, 0 to 1 by dividing uh, and casting. Finally, as mentioned about the pixels in the discrimination mask are labeled either 1 to 3 for the sake of convenience. Uh, let's subtract 1. Uh, from the segmentation ma uh, mask resulting in labels that are 0, 1, 2. Uh, here's our uh, functions. Uh, we are defining normalize, load image train with flipping and uh, resizing. Uh, and the same for, uh, for training set and for the test set. So the dataset already contained the required splits of test and train, uh, so let's continue to the, use the same split. We would use 64 for uh, the batch size, 1000 for buffer size, so our steps per epoch would be train length uh, divided by batch size. So our train and test data sets are ready, uh, we are mapping uh, our functions and after tune it. Let's take a look uh, at an image example and its corresponding mask from the data set. Uh, we are defining display function where we, uh, we would uh, display input image, true mask and predicted mask. Uh, and uh, let's display the uh, Dataset. We will begin with the dataset uh, Oxford uh, pad. So here we go. We've got the input image and a true mask of the input image. Let's define the model. The model being used uh, here is a modified UNet. What is UNet? The UNet is a convolutional network architecture for fast and precise segmentation of image. Up to now, it has outperformed the prior best uh, method, a slanting video window convolutional network, on uh, different challenges. Uh, you can see the challenges. So here is the architecture, input image, uh, all the convolutional blocks, 
and the output condition map. Uh, so we would use it in the image segmentation. Uh, unit consists of encoder, down sampler, and decoder, up sampler, in order to learn robust features and reduce the number of trainable parameters. A pre-trained model can be used as the encoder. So the encoder for this task will be a pre-trained mo uh, mobile net version 2 model whose intermediate outputs will be used and the decoder will be the upsample block already implemented in TensorFlow. Pix to pix. The reason to output three channels is because uh, we have three possible labels for, uh, for each pixel, the true label, uh, border, la uh, border mask, uh, border pixel, So here we go. Think of this as a multi classification where each pixel is being classified in three classes. So that's why we've got uh, three output channels. As mentioned, the encoder will be a retrained mo uh, mobile net version 2 model, which is prepared and ready to use in uh, Keras. The encoder consists of specific outputs uh, from intermediate layers in the model. Now that the encoder will not be trained during uh, the training process. We are using mobile net version 2, we got input shape 128 by 128 by 3. Uh, we are not including top layers because uh, we are extracting features. Uh, and we are using the activations of uh, these layers block number 1, 3, 6, 13, 16. And we are creating the feature extraction model and uh, it's not trainable. Uh, we are extracting uh, features with the encoder. The decoder uh, upsampler is simply a series of upsample uh, blocks implemented in uh, TensorFlow examples in pix to pix So now we can uh, define a unit model. Uh, we've got our inputs uh, down sampling through the model upsampling and establishing the skip connections and uh, the last layer of the model uh, would be convolutional 2d transpose uh, so now we can train the model now uh, all that is left to do is to compile and train the model the loss being used here is pass categorical cross entropy the reason to use this last function is because the network is trying to assign each pixel a label, just like multi-class projection. In the true segmentation mask, uh, each pixel uh, has either 0, 1, or 2 label. The network here is outputting three channels. Essentially, each channel is trying to learn to predict a class. Uh, so that's why uh, sparse categorical cross entropy is recommended last for such a scenario. And using the output of the network, uh, the label is assigned to the pixel uh, is the channel with the highest value. This is what the create mass function is doing. So we've got our model, now we can compile. Uh, we would use Adam as the optimizer, pass uh, categorical cross entropy as the loss function, and accuracy as the matrix. So now have a quick look at the resulting model uh, architecture, input layer, uh, encoder, decoder. Uh, up sample, down sample. So let's try out the model to see what it predicts before training. Uh, we're creating mask and uh, we can show the here are the functions that uh, show the predictions. So here we go. It's an input uh, image, true mask, and the predicted mask. Uh, let's observe how the model improves while it's training to uh, accomplish this task. A callback function is defined below, so we would uh, see the history with this callback. We would train it on uh, 20 epochs. Uh, so we are fitting uh, uh, the model with our train data set. Number of epochs, steps per epoch, validation steps, validation data, uh, and the callbacks. And what we've got our, after uh, the training, uh, input image, true mask, and the predicted mask. It's a wow result, right? Uh, 
and uh, let's see the history the history of training our model after filling with our data so the training and validation loss uh, the red is the training loss and uh, the blue is the validation loss good results for image segmentation uh, and uh, let's see uh, how we make predictions on other images from this data set in the interest of saving time, the number of epochs was kept small, but you may set this high to achieve more accurate result in your search. So that's our images, input image, true mask, predict mask, input image, true mask, predict mask, input image, true mask, predict mask. Now that you have the basic understanding of what image segmentation is and how it works, you can try this tutorial out with uh, different intermediate layer outputs in your research and uh, use it in your Kaggle competitions. Thank you for the attention. See you. Thank you. See you tomorrow.